There are three ways that have been described for estimating amniotic fluid volume. These are visual assessment, the two and eight centimeter rules, <clears throat> and the amniotic fluid index. I'm sure you're familiar with these. Uh, while I personally rely heavily on a visual estimate, we will start with the two and eight centimeter rules <clears throat> and uh, show how that uh, influences how we judge the volume of amniotic fluid. Well, these rules were originally described by Chamberlain and Manning. Now, Manning was the professor, and uh, uh, Frank Manning is a very bright guy. Dr. Ruth Goldstein and I, my associate at the university, thought that Frank had really gone off the deep edge, and we were going to prove it <clears throat> by doing a study where we took a large number of patients in whom we had large field of view images of the entirety of the uterus. Therefore, it was possible on those images to make both a visual estimate of the volume of amniotic fluid and then at a later time come back and measure the deepest vertical pocket, which we both did. We first made a visual estimate of the volume of amniotic fluid. Then three months later, we came back and individually measured what we thought was the deepest vertical pocket. Our visual estimate of fluid included oligohydramnios, when we thought the volume was abnormally low, polyhydramnios, where we thought the volume was abnormally high, and then normal. But in the normal range, we gave ourselves the opportunity to say it was normal but below average, or it was normal but above average. As I said, three months later, we came back and measured the deepest vertical pocket according to the rules that Manning set up, and we made this graph. And when I saw that graph, I was rather taken aback because, in fact, there was a virtual linear relationship between the deepest vertical pocket and our visual estimate of amniotic fluid. Now, after some thought, it was obvious that I shouldn't have been surprised because clearly the single largest pocket that we see when looking at an obstetrical sonogram is our single biggest visual clue as to whether we think the fluid is normal, increased, or decreased. But the other truly interesting feature was that neither Dr. Goldstein or I ever called a case oligohydramnios that had a greatest vertical pocket more than two and a half centimeters. And neither Dr. Goldstein or I called a case polyhydramnios that didn't have a deepest vertical pocket greater than seven and a half centimeters. So from the perspective of the two and eight centimeter rules, and our visual estimate of amniotic fluid, uh, there was a rather remarkable correlation with both two centimeter deepest vertical pocket and the call of oligohydramnios and an eight centimeter deepest vertical pocket and our call of polyhydramnios. Tell you that I am not a big fan of the amniotic fluid index, but I can tell you that I've never seen any measurement take obstetrics by storm like the amniotic fluid index. I had professors of obstetrics who were outstanding clinicians saying, oh, well, the amniotic fluid index is 5.1, so I don't have to worry about this patient. And coming along on another day and saying, oh, the amniotic fluid index is 4.9, I'd better do something. Let me absolutely assure you that you cannot make judgments about amniotic fluid index based on small variations. I challenge anybody to go in, measure the amniotic fluid index, walk out of the room, look at your results, 
walk back into the room and get within two of the amniotic fluid index you just measured, you will find it to be extraordinarily difficult. Now, let me point, point out a further problem with the amniotic fluid index. It would be entirely legal and following every rule of measuring the amniotic fluid index for me to measure the deepest vertical pocket right there, then measure the deepest vertical pocket right there, then measure the deepest vertical pocket right there, and then finally measure the deepest vertical pocket right there. So essentially, measuring the same pocket four times, I would have followed every rule and come up with a perfectly legitimate amniotic fluid index. But both you and I know that it would be entirely nonsensical. Now, in the back of everyone's mind, we all realize that that doesn't make any sense at all. And what it does is it drives us to measure the deepest vertical pocket in the periphery of all four quadrants. And that isn't any more sensible than measuring all four directly in the middle of the conjunction of the four quadrants. I recommend that you uh, view the lecture on polyhydramnios where we will reiterate some of this information. And you will come to understand that mild polyhydramnios is you know, it's, uh, not very significant, might not be in the vast majority of cases significant at all. So if my eye tells me it's poly, I never report it without a number to back me up. So not only does my eye have to say, I think there's too much fluid, but I have to have a deepest vertical pocket of greater than eight and or an AFI greater than 24. By contrast, if my eye tells me it's oligohydramnios, you can't talk me out of it with a number and you can't twist my arm behind my back and talk me out of it. Oligohydramnios, unlike mild polyhydramnios, is extraordinarily dangerous to the pregnancy, so dangerous in fact that if I believe I am looking at a case with oligo, I will not release that patient until the, I've called the obstetrician to let them know that the patient has oligo and ask what the disposition of the patient should be.